The opening scene of the film shows the shadow of a disc-shaped object traveling over a vast area. At a waterfall, there is a person in a cloak. It is an alien humanoid. It takes off its cloak and downs a black liquid. The body trembles and hurts, seemingly mutating from inside. When it hits the water, the body starts to disintegrate. Greetings from our channel. We are now introduced to a Scottish archaeological team that unearths a 35,000-year-old cave. Charlie Holloway and Elizabeth Shaw inspected certain cave paintings that, in Elizabeth's opinion, show that someone wants them to be found. Later, while in cryogenic slumber on board the USS Prometheus in deep space, David and Android examine the crew members' bodies. He is also able to see their dreams, and he spends time researching and working out. Vickers, the mission director, awakens from sleep automatically and orders David to rouse the crew, which includes Elizabeth and Holloway. They are shown a holographic video from the owner of the Whalen Corporation later on during the crew's briefing. An elderly man named Peter Whalen presents David as the closest thing he has to a son and says that he should know at this point that Elizabeth and Holloway are in power. The presentation is still being given. They display pictures of ancient civilizations in which folks pretend to worship enormous entities that are looking towards the stars. However, because there is only one star system in that arrangement, it is so far away from Earth that they have no means of knowing about it. They are traveling to the only planet that is capable of hosting life. They refer to these enormous creatures as engineers because they think that humans created them. Later, when the ship flies over the planet's surface, Holloway notices some strange buildings. Captain Yan lands the spacecraft nearby, and a survey crew disembarks with their protective gear. Along with crew members Milburn, Fifield, and Ford, this group includes Elizabeth Holloway and David. They go to a building that resembles a pyramid. As they enter Fifield and send probes out to study the inside, beggars are able to see the progression via cameras on the crew's helmets and learn that the environment within the pyramid is a cave. Holloway takes off his headgear. Everyone imitates. David examines some wall sculptures. They are mucus and coated. He touches the symbols, and they begin to glow. This seems to have triggered a hologram simulation of huge extraterrestrial entities that are rushing in their direction. As they see one of the people collapse, the crew examines the scene. They discover the alien's remains. It had been killed by a closing door. Then David deciphers the strange writing on the door. Fifield requested Milburn to part with him because he wants to. David succeeds in opening the door to expose a huge humanoid head and several paintings. Yannick informs the crew on board that a storm is approaching and gives them the go-ahead to turn around. David stealthily removes a cylinder. There is a leak of a dark liquid on the floor as he walks away. The transport is returning quickly to the ship. The alien's head falls off Elizabeth. When she returns outside to get it, the storm is all around her. Holloway rushes to assist her, but David saves them both. Later, when Ford and Elizabeth were looking at the alien head, they saw that it was wearing a helmet, which David then assisted in taking off. They believed the humanoid head below was in a condition of transformation. They arouse the brain, giving it the impression that it is still alive. The eyes open, and it keeps evolving. The head erupts after being contained. Later, David is conversing with someone while standing next to a creopod while wearing a helmet. Ford and Elizabeth are still examining head samples. Opening a cylinder containing alien material that he had brought back, David dabbed some of the dark liquid onto the tip of his finger. Shortly later, he speaks with Holloway and asks him, what would you do to find out why he came all the way here? Anything and everything is inserted by Holloway. David makes a drink, but he accidentally contaminates his finger by dipping it in the beverage. Soon later, the Melbourne spots something that resembles a snake creeping in their direction. When Melbourne reaches out to touch it, it encircles his arm. He yells on Fifield to stop it. A skin from below the beast creeps inside Melbourne's suit and slips down his neck as its blood splashes over Fifield's helmet, shattering the glass. Later, when Holloway wakes up, he discovers something in his eyes while he is washing his face. As a crew heads back to the pyramids, David rides out on a buggy to fix one of the malfunctioning probes. As David searches, he finds more cylinders and aliens, but when one finds a control room, he disables the feet so Vickers can no longer see David. Additionally, he finds another corpse in a pot that seems to still be alive. Milburn's body forward also detects that there is something in Melbourne's neck and the snake-like monster comes out and slithers away. Inside the pyramid, Holloway is obviously unwell, 
Holloway is shouting as the squad makes its way back to the ship. Vickers won't allow him board the ship again since he is obviously contaminated. Vickers uses the flamethrower to murder him when he orders the rest of the crew to depart without him. Elizabeth is being inspected by David afterwards. He discloses that she is carrying an unusual fetus. She begins to tremble because he won't let her see it. Before forward comes, wearing a biohazard suit since David is trying to put her back into Creo slumber. Elizabeth, who is still aware, struggles to get away from them. She rushes to the vicar's room and medical pod to get the thing surgically removed. Elizabeth flees while the monster is contained within the medicinal pot. She starts the decontamination process on the machine. Fairfield's camera activates out of the blue, and he seems to be outside the ship. Fifield comes through the open door and begins to murder crew members. He is killed by Janet with the flamethrower. Elizabeth is getting ready to go with the wetlands team when Yannick finds her. He makes vain attempts to persuade her to go. He does assure her that he will take whatever steps are necessary to ensure that no extraterrestrial substance makes its way to Earth. Elizabeth is hesitant to take off her helmet when the crew arrives at the pyramid despite David's assurance that Holloway's virus did not come from the air. Cylinders are seen in the cargo hold, he adds. When Yannick looks at the map, he sees that it depicts a ship inside inside a pyramid. When everything went wrong, the aliens were preparing to depart Earth, according to David, who then takes the group to the flight deck. He thinks he can talk to the extraterrestrials. The body is examined. It rises up after waking up. Elizabeth begs to know their motivations for leaving Earth and their reasons for hating them. Waylon instructs David to explain why we've come instead. The alien snatches up David and pulls off his head just as you want it. As the alien assaults the rest of the squad, Elizabeth manages to flee. Through David's webcam, Vickers observes Waylon's demise. As David observes, the alien turns on the spacecraft. The alien spacecraft appears as Elizabeth continues to flee in the direction of Prometheus. Elizabeth warns Jenik that he must stop it since it is bearing death and is headed for Earth. Vickers decides to use an escape pod to leave the ship, but the rest of the voyage, they assist Yannick. Yannick alien spaceships are struck by the Prometheus after Jack uses his Vickers lifeboat module. As spaceship debris pelts Vickers and Elizabeth, they are fleeing over the planet's surface. Elizabeth is buried when Vickers is struck and killed. She moves to the lifeboat module even though she only has two minutes of oxygen left as she rises higher. She discovers that the thing that was extracted from her womb is still alive after hearing a noise within. When she releases the monster, which fights the humanoid alien as she flees, David calls her and warns her that the humanoid alien is also approaching. The monster seems to murder the alien outside by inserting a tentacle into its mouth. David approaches Elizabeth for assistance when she is sobbing. He is aware of other spacecraft nearby that he can pilot. She transports them on a buggy. She wants to go to the alien's home planet despite David's assurance that he can take her there. Like and subscribe to see more videos like this, which really benefits my channel.